When it comes to choosing the right parts for your next gaming PC, selecting the best CPU is one of the most important things to get right. Should you go Intel or AMD? Does core count matter or is clock speed more important? Or would you be better with a current gen or last gen processor? Well in this video we've tested all of the most popular gaming CPUs on the market right now to give you guys some advice on not only what the best CPUs are, but how to select the perfect one for your next build. Let's do this. The Corsair Titan series is here. Corsair's latest lineup of 240mm, 280mm and 360mm of coolers feature Corsair's new flow drive cooling engine with a three-phase pump for higher flow rates, higher efficiency and better cooling. Cap swap compatibility allows you to change the top plate of your cooler, while IQ Link support and Magnetic Dome RX fans round off a design that's ready to keep your CPU cool under pressure. Check out the range at the first link below. Now if one thing's for sure, the world of CPUs is pretty complicated to understand. So before diving into my recommendations, let's talk about the current players, Intel and AMD, what they've got to offer and what you need to know. You can use the timestamps below to navigate through today's video as you wish and everything mentioned will be linked to the latest pricing and availability in the description below. Now the desktop CPU market is one of the biggest duopolies in the world, Intel and AMD. Now for a long time, Intel dominated the CPU market and killed AMD as far as market share was concerned. But all of that changed a few years ago when when AMD launched their Ryzen lineup of processors. Fast forward a few Ryzen generations later, and I'm pleased to say that the latest Ryzen 9000 and previous gen Ryzen 7000 lineups have been hugely successful. Intel, on the other hand, have had a few issues as of late, with their previous generation 13th and 14th gen lineup of processors suffering their fair share of problems, and their latest core ultra lineup, which is basically a rebranded 15th gen, not exactly helping Intel a great deal either. The only area in the current CPU market Intel seem to win out is on multi-core performance for those of you who need the most cores possible for things like video editing or streaming. Now let's talk quickly about core counts and clock speeds because they're also important things to know. Now in a CPU you have a number of cores each capable of carrying out a certain number of calculations in any given second which surely has to mean that more cores are better right? Not necessarily. Games aren't really designed to leverage huge high core count processors which is why you'll see on a Ryzen 9 or an i9 chip in Task Manager only some of the threads or cores actually be fully utilized. What that means is that for gaming, the speed of the cores is more important than the number of cores itself. That is where clock speed comes in. Now games like what we call single threaded performance and a higher clock speed often helps ensure that we get better single thread performance. But clock speed again is not a fully determinant factor as to the performance of the CPU. If only things were that simple. That's where Intel have gone wrong on their 14th gen and more recent Core Ultra lineups. There's loads of clock speed there but that in turn creates loads of heat and the single thread performance embedded within the architecture just isn't as good right now as what AMD have to offer. Now before I dive into the recommendations let me quickly explain as well the CPU naming schemes. AMD is decidedly a little bit more simple. You've got Ryzen 3, 5, 7 and 9. Ryzen 3 has been absent for a little while so for the purposes of today's video we'll be focusing on 5, 7 and 9. The higher the number the higher end the processor. After the Ryzen 7 number which indicates the tier of CPU you then have the generation. So you would have the, for example, AMD Ryzen 9 9950X. The 9 is the Ryzen 9000 generation of processors and the 950 at the end determines the tier of CPU. Now you may have also heard of AMD's 3D lineup of processors. The 3D denomination on the end of any CPU means it benefits from AMD's 3D stacked vCache. Basically they add loads more cache to the CPU, stack it on top of each other, hence the 3D name, and that can be great for gaming. But you'll see more about that a bit later. On the Intel side you have the Intel i3, i5, i7 or i9. That's true for about 20 years worth of processors and more recently you've got the Intel Core Ultra 3, 5, 7 and 9. Handily for us the Core Ultra 5 or i5 is roughly equivalent to a Ryzen 5. The Core Ultra 9, Ryzen 9 again are competing directly against one another making these CPUs nice and easy to compare. Now in order to determine the best CPUs to buy we've tested a wide variety of different means from synthetic benchmarks such as Cinebench and 3DMark, which are a really great way of 
of evaluating the CPUs against one another with the same test conditions, as well as running a number of gaming tests. Everything from Apex Legends to Call of Duty, Cyberpunk and Alan Wake 2. To keep all of our tests fair on the gaming side, we used an RTX 4080 Super running at 1080p high settings. Why 1080p? Well, the lower the resolution, the more likely the CPU is to become the bottleneck. And we want to expose the performance that the CPU is leaving on the table. So you can see how upgrading from one chip to the next might have a real material difference. Now, my favorite CPU for those of you looking to spend under $200 has to be part of the AMD Ryzen 5 family of processors, specifically the Ryzen 5 7600 non-X. Now, the Ryzen 7000 lineup offers a really great value option for those of you looking to keep a lid on cost. It leverages AMD's last generation of Ryzen 7000 processors, but they still give you all the same features with the same motherboards you supported, the same DDR5 memory supported, the same connectivity supported. The only real difference is that the newer Ryzen 9000 chips are slightly more power efficient and give us a little more performance. AMD haven't released a successor yet to the Ryzen 5 7600 non-X, and to be frank, they don't really need to. At the time of recording this video, you can buy it for $195 on on Newegg, and for that you're going to get some fantastic gaming performance. As far as synthetic performance goes, it beats out Intel's far more expensive Core Ultra 5 CPU that's going to set you back around another $100. And while its multi-core performance in Cinebench is hardly fantastic, it performs where it matters, gaming. In Call of Duty's Black Ops 6, when paired up with the 4080 Super, it delivered around about 143 FPS on average, dropping only 3 or 4 frames per second to its more expensive Ryzen 5 9600X bigger brother. Other. In Cyberpunk 2077, which is arguably a more CPU bound title, the performance differential between this and the other CPUs we tested was bigger. But again, you've got to remember, this is the cheapest CPU on the list. And the performance is pretty proportional to the price this chip is going to come in at. Look at a game as well like Apex Legends, which is less CPU bound than some of our other titles, and is hitting really some of the in-game FPS caps. And you can see the Ryzen 5 7600 non-X in this scenario isn't really holding the GPU back, at least not comparative to other combos given the in-game limitations. Now, if you do have a little more money to spend and are shopping around a $250 budget, the Ryzen 5 9600X that I'm talking about can be a good value option. In Cyberpunk, for example, the frame rate uplift over the 7600 non-X is fairly pronounced. And in the current market, it's actually not going to cost you that much more money. Again, at the time of filming, you're looking around $230. Here in the UK, £224 when I checked this morning. And for that, you're getting a lot of C CPU. Now, when this chip launched, it had fairly lukewarm reviews. It just plainly doesn't provide that much of a performance uplift over the 7600X derivative, and it came in at a higher price. It's now basically at price parity to its last-gen Ryzen 7600X counterpart, making it an awesome choice. You get a bump in clock speed, you get better power efficiency, and a little bump in performance, which is always nice to see. The AM5 platform is a massive selling point. You can upgrade right through to a Ryzen 9 9950X on the same board that you'll be installing this into. Just make sure the power delivery and other stuff is okay if you're planning on topping out the CPU. And you get all the great PCI Gen 5 support for SSDs and graphics cards. You get the USB 4 support that you'll find on those newer Ryzen 9000 optimized motherboards. And all in all, it's a great package. Performance is good in other titles too. Call of Duty's Black Ops 6 is strong. And while the differential to the cheaper chip isn't that massive, it is still an increase in frame rate, which is good to see. And frankly, compared to the Core Ultra 5 with all of its problems and higher price point, comparatively speaking, is a great bet. Now, if you're looking to step up to around a $300 budget for your processor, you might want to consider this, the AMD Ryzen 7 7700X. Now, in an ideal world, I would want to compare this to the Ryzen 7 9700X. And you can see that this newer Ryzen 7 chip does provide a performance uplift over its last-gen counterpart. The 7700X delivers strong performance in the likes of Call of Duty's Black Ops 6, with around 158 frames per second on average, and again in Cyberpunk 2077. But the price difference is astonishing. Yes, the performance uplift from the 9700X would be nice to have, but price-wise, you're looking at about a $50 or $60 difference. And for a sub $300 budget, the 7700X gives you the advantage of more cores, hence the higher multi-thread performance in applications like Cinebench Multi-Core. That's going to be really great for things like video editing, rendering, or streaming, where the core count does matter, without having to spend the big extra cash you'd spend buying the Ryzen 7 9700X. Now, the truth is, if we step up to the next price point, which is the sub $400, mark, you kind of end up in CPU no man's land. This Ryzen 7 9700X falls into that price bracket, and for that it's a solid CPU. But unfortunately, I just don't feel like it's all that great value for money, at least not right now. The Core Ultra 7 is frankly nowhere to be
be seen and just not really that recommendable based on its gaming performance. Recommending a Ryzen based config is so much easier on the basis of good upgrade paths and a good platform with reliable longevity. Intel, we're just not sure what's going on there right now and that makes recommending the Core Ultra 7 kind of difficult. Personally, I would sit this price point out at the moment and I'm not entirely sure why you would buy a 9700X at its current price or the Core Ultra 7. I think if you need the extra cores, you might as well spend the extra cash and step up to a i9, Core Ultra 9 or Ryzen 9 CPU. And if you're after the gaming performance alone, you'll want to consider the chip in the next price bracket, the sub $500 mark. Now the chip I'm going to talk about here is a monster, but it's fantastic performance against the backdrop of lukewarm CPUs is what makes it so expensive. The CPU I'm talking about is of course the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. Now a couple of years ago, AMD launched the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. The 3D denomination on the end of any CPU means it benefits from AMD's 3D stacked vCache. Basically, they identified the biggest bottleneck in modern gaming CPUs, which is the L3 cache, and stacked it, giving the CPU CPU way more space to store instructions as close to the chip as possible. Now what this does in reality is puts this chip at the top of our gaming benchmark charts in more scenarios than you'd care to count. And the successor to the 7800X 3D, the new 9800X 3D, is no exception. Building on the great performance of the 7800X 3D with marginal gains to average frame rates and much bigger uplifts to the 1% lows. The 1% and 0.2% lows by the way basically represent what your frame drops are going to feel like. What on average was the lowest 1% of frame rate in the test. The higher the 1% lows, the more consistent and less droppy the frame rate is going to feel in gaming. The 7800X 3D, before it went frankly nuts, was retailing for around about $399, below its over $400 MSRP. The newer 9800X 3D, that's retailing for at the moment for far more than its $479 MSRP. Frankly though, if you're looking to build a gaming PC, there's no need to spend any more. Just buy this CPU. The only disadvantage advantage it has really is its core count. 8 cores, 16 threads is not that much when you think about video editing, rendering, streaming, but if you're gaming and gaming alone, this is absolutely what I'd pick up. And that's demonstrated in all of our performance benchmarks. But what if you do want the higher core count and you've got a higher budget? Should you consider the Core Ultra 9 or AMD's new Ryzen 9 9950X and 9900X? Well, for me, the AMD Ryzen 9 9900X is the best value high core count CPU with 12 cores, 24 threads, and a $449 price point that puts it a staggering $150 lower than the more pricey and higher core count 9950X. It's a real great entry for those of you again looking to do multi-core tasks such as video editing, rendering or streaming. It does so while giving you all the advantages of the AMD platform which for me is a big winner and while it gives you less raw performance than the Ryzen 9 9950X and Core Ultra 9, it is going to do so at a far better price to perform performance ratio. Now in Intel's defense, they do still beat out AMD's top end 9950X when it comes to multi-thread performance in most scenarios. And while the Core Ultra 9 actually offers slightly less performance than the last gen i9-14900K, it does so while getting things like temperature and power consumption under control. And this may seem controversial, but if you're shopping at the top end of the market and you want the best performance possible with multi-core in mind, the Core Ultra 9 is arguably the best buy. The performance drop off from the i9 is marginal, but it's going to do so while giving you much lower temperatures and still more performance than what you'll find from AMD's top end Ryzen 9 9950X. Now the Intel platform is hard to recommend paying the same or more money for less performance than last gen, even if they've fixed a few fundamental problems, isn't particularly exciting to anyone. Now I'll leave all the CPUs recommended today down in the description below for latest pricing and availability. They are affiliate links, which means we may earn a kickback if you buy. If you enjoyed this one, make sure to get subscribed. Thanks for watching and as always, we'll see you in the next one.